Nonfiction is expansive. It can be memoir, investigative, biographical, historical, or like the 2022 finalist for the National Book Award for Nonfiction, genre bending work that defies categorization. This year's finalists consider the potential and limitations of modern science, examine race, politics, and identity, and illuminate a family's magical ancestry, all to enrich our understanding of one another and the world around us. The panel chair for this year's National Book Award for Nonfiction is Oscar Villalon, the managing editor at Ziziva and former book editor at the San Francisco Chronicle. Good evening. Oh, I look so severe in that photo. Um, I, I just want to say uh, what an honor it is uh, to be on the stage uh, representing the uh, Nonfiction Award Committee. Um, I such a privilege to be around such a thoughtful group of readers and thinkers. I, I can't thank them enough uh, for their work. Um, so let me just thank them right now. Uh, Carol Anderson, Melissa Febos, Thor Hansen. Yeah, you can applaud. Yes, please. <laughs> Janet Webster Jones. Uh, you know, um, uh, besides you know, having this wonderful opportunity to read all these incredible works of nonfiction this year. Um, we end up uh, coming into this project as strangers, and I think I could say uh, we came out of it as friends. So thank you so much uh, to the National Book Foundation for that added benefit. So uh, with, without further ado, the finalists for the 22 National Book Award for Nonfiction are Megan O'Rourke, The Invisible Kingdom. Reimagining Chronic Illness, Publishers Riverhead Books, Penguin Random House. Imani Perry, South to America, A Journey Below the Mason Dixon to Understand the Soul of a Nation, Elko Harper Collins Publishers. David Quammen, Breathless, The Scientific Race to Defeat a Deadly Virus, Simon Schuster. Ingrid Rojas Contreras, The Man Who Can Move Clouds, a memoir, Double Day, Penguin Random House. And Robert Samuels and Tulu Olorunipa, his name is George Floyd, One Man's Life and the Struggle for Racial Justice, Viking Books, Penguin Random House. And this year's National Award, excuse me, National Book Award for Nonfiction goes to Imani Perry. <laughs> Bama has a National Book Award. All right. I want to begin um, by thanking the people who made this book possible. My community at ECHO, especially Sarah, Caitlin, Helen, Miriam, my wonderful agent, Tanya McKinnon, Princeton's Department of African American Studies, the Lyceum Agency, Sky Blue Media, and the publishing professionals I've worked with throughout my career all have been integral to this moment. I also want to honor my fellow finalists, everyone who wrote with a righteous purpose and a stunning pen, wonderful books. And of course, I offer my deep gratitude to the National Book Foundation and the judges. And from the moment of my birth, thank you to Nita Garner Perry, holy, Teresa Perry, brilliant, Stephen S. Whitman, righteous, I am sweetly indebted and deeply bound to my family and friends from Birmingham, Boston, 
Philly, Chicago, Milwaukee, Georgia, Tennessee, Los Angeles, New Orleans, and always Mississippi, land of the bluest blues. You know how much I adore y'all. As I have remained steadfast in moments of disappointment, may integrity and grace be my familiar in this moment of recognition. The artist and the intellectual is obligated to be truthful. I promise that I will continue to bear witness to the best of my ability. I write for my people. I write because we children of the lash scarred, rope choked, bullet ridden, desecrated are still here standing. I write for the field holler, the shout, the growl, the singer, the signer, and the signified. I write for the sinned against and the sanctifying. I write for the ones who clean the toilets and till the soil and walk the picket lines. For the hungry, the caged, the disregarded, the holding on, I write for you. I write because I love sentences and I love freedom more. For piney woods, live oaks, swamps and cypress trees, red clay, black earth, cotton kudzu and Spanish moss, pecans, pawpaws and peaches, the prettiest daybreak, the chatting blue jays, the dancing lightning bugs, the decaying magnolia blossoms. I write for my children. Freeman Diallo Perry Rab loved and Issa Garner Rab loved, who are the very best of me and the most beautiful young men that ever were. And for their entire generation who deserve so much better than what we've offered them, may they succeed where we have failed. My grandmother, Nita Garner Perry Holy, used to say, you weren't born to live on flower beds of ease. These are not easy times. We may write in solitude, but we labor in solidarity. Community is never easy, but absolutely necessary. Let us meet the challenges of a broken world together, making intercessions with love unbound and heart without end. Ashe, amen, amen.